Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm glad to have you. So this video is kind of a special one. Um, this one I'm tying a butcher fly. Uh, it's a classic salmon fly. But this one I'm doing with a, uh, it's a material kit that I uh, came up with. Uh, the idea I, behind it was I wanted to try to come up with something that would help um, newcomers that are, you know, people that are interested in uh, tying a classic salmon fly or a full dressed salmon fly. Uh, I wanted to give them an opportunity to be able to do that and have everything included all in one kit uh, to tie one fly and not have to go and source all these different materials that they may not use again. You know, this will kind of give you guys a chance to uh, find out whether or not you like tying salmon flies. Um, but this one, you know, this will actually be the last one that I'm doing like this. Um, between YouTube and, uh, you know, doing the videos here with Facebook and everything, I'm pretty involved there as well. Um, I really want to put my focus into Facebook and making more videos here. I think that I can um, really help and reach more people. So I do have a series of these kits. Um, well, uh, I have a, a few more of these kits um, available at the moment. Today is the 23rd of November. I have seven kits available. Uh, once they're gone, they're gone. But after that, um, once a month, I'm going to make up a kit different flies each month uh, and I'm going to give one away to a subscriber um, and then that kit when the subscriber wins it uh, I will do a one-on-one -on -one live tie with them via zoom or Facebook messenger or however uh, whatever is easiest for for us um, to work out uh, but for this video you know this will still include all the materials you need to tie this particular fly so if you want to go out on your own get your materials uh, if you're not able to get a kit from me before they're gone um, this will really help you out. Um, so, all right, let's take a look at what's in the kit first, and then uh, we'll we'll get started on the first steps. Okay, here's the material list. This is just a general list. There's no names of anything of uh, you know the different type of. Um, the different brands. Uh, the brands of all the materials that are here, I'll put that in the description section of this video and the next. This will be a two-part uh, two part series um, for this one. So we've got a, first of course we've got our blind eye hook, and we'll just go right down the list. We've got the tip and tag, which is the silver oval tinsel and the yellow silk. In this case I'm using rayon floss, uh, rayon floss is a little bit easier to find. It's a little bit more affordable and um, for those of you that are just starting to tie salmon flies uh, You might already have some rayon floss in your kit in your uh, um, in, in your material stash from doing either trout flies or bass flies or whatever So rayon's a little bit easier to find uh, Then there's the body sections. This is a four-part body section. So there's four different colors one two three four and They are blue well, they're red claret, pale blue, claret, and then light blue. That varies origin from the original pattern just a little bit. Um, I believe it's supposed to be a red claret and a blue, and then a dark red claret and a dark blue. But I didn't have those exact colors, so I matched them as close as I could with what I had uh, for seals for. Um, and then the ribbing, we've got both our ribs here. There's a flat silver tinsel and then an oval silver tinsel to go with it. There's the hackle, which is the natural black. That's just going to be the body hackle. Then there's uh, one wrap of yellow for the throat and then uh, guinea head. And then the, there's the wing. This is the main wing. Now this does call for... Um, in the Kelson version, it called for golden pheasant tail, which is a little bit difficult to work with. And I found out in the last kit that people had some trouble working with it. So I cut that part out and I actually started going over towards more of a price tannet version of the wing, which had more colored swan in it and Cory Bustard. But again, Cory Bustard is also a little bit harder to find. It's a little bit more expensive. So I subbed the Cory Bustard with brown turkey. 
So the wing is mainly just brown turkey tail and dyed turkey tail. Um, so you might want to call this one, this, this fly, technically a variant since it's not technically true to either uh, recipe. Uh, the roof, I gave a, uh, a whole pair of bronze mallard per kit. Um, just in case you mess up, the roof is a little bit touchy. It can be a little bit strange to work with. Oh, I missed the butt in the back part of the fly. That goes after the tip and tag. And there's, of course, the underwing. The underwing for this, actually, as Kelson describes it, is one tippet feather and one um, breast feather from a golden pheasant versus instead of a pair of each. So I, I decided to stay with that, leaving just the two feathers instead of trying to fit four underneath that wing. Uh, I felt that for beginners or those just kind of starting out, um, it would be better to just have to deal with the two feathers. It'll still look great, though. And then uh, there's the tail as well. Now, I wanted to wait on the tail a bit. This comes with the tail, and the tail veiling for um, there's, for the two versions. For Kelson, it was teal and um, some blue swan. So I don't have the swan, but I had some, uh, some teal blue um, goose, or uh, excuse me, uh, turkey. So we're going to use that. And I gave you more on the teal because you're going to use teal as well in the wing. There's a small slip of it uh, that's used on the under part of the main wing. So when we do the tail, we'll pick the tail fibers from up here and leave the rest for the wing. And then there's the topping and horns and the cheeks, for which are uh, kingfisher instead of um, cotinga. So... For now, what we're going to do here is we're going to put the wing together. We will set the rest of this aside. And then we will go through and put the rest of this together uh, in just a few minutes. Okay. Set those aside. Now you'll need a couple pairs of scissors. Uh, I don't think you'll need big scissors for this. I like to keep them on, on hand. But you'll at least need some uh, smaller scissors to cut your feather pieces. I recommend tweezers and uh, your bodkin or dubbing needle. So let's take all of these out first. You'll notice that the colored ones, there's only one section of each of the colored ones where there's two of the brown. With the, uh, the dyed colored sections, we're going to use both sides. With the natural brown, we're only going to use one side. Okay. So first we're going to work on the left side or the near side of the fly. So what we're going to do is cut off all of the left side pieces. Now when you come to the brown turkey, you'll notice that there's two different lengths on there. Uh, most of the turkey that came with the kit, they all pretty much look the same. Um, we're going to use this side, the shorter side. If you look at the longer side, you'll notice it's thinner, it's wispier towards the tip. And towards the tip it might even have a little flare or curve. Or, uh, we're not going to use that side unless we absolutely have to. So we're going to use the, the short side. 
So we base our left and right off of that. That would make this short side the one we use for the right side, the back side of the fly. Okay, so we've got all these in front of us. Now, it's kind of a matter of debate on the color order. Um, you can do whichever color order you like. I'm going to split it up. Uh, I'm going to try and not complicate it too much for you. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to do two strands of turkey first. And we'll take those two strands right off the bottom. Hold on to those. Keep those in your fingers. And we're going to put some blue on there. We're likely only going to use maybe two or three strands of blue total. So now what we'll do is we take the blue and we'll line up the outer tips, not the side that you cut. And you want to line them up in orientation such that they line up almost perfectly and tip to tip. You might even, if you want, have the blue just a little bit, and I mean just a, a fraction hanging off the tip of the brown, a little bit longer. And then you can just gently stroke them together. And that's all you really have to do. You can, you can take them and bend them a little bit like this. That'll help kind of get all those little fibers together. Then you take your tweezers or your dubbing needle and we're going to take off one piece of that. Now we've got just that right there. All right, so with the blue, we're just gonna do the same thing with the red. We'll grab the red and we'll put that over the top of the blue. And we'll put those right together like that. And then just take them and just very gently wiggle them around, poke at them. I like to brush them between these two fingers here Slightly different angles sometimes that kind of works them in together. And again, we'll just separate those pieces. We'll leave one of the red pieces there. And then we're going to go back to the turkey again, the brown. Marrying is a little bit of a, a process to get down. Once you figure it out though and you get it, it goes pretty easy. And with turkey, turkey marries pretty well and pretty easily. Part of why I chose to go with turkey versus um, the golden pheasant. That golden pheasant tail can be finicky unless you can get a really good tail. And really good tails are a little bit harder to find these days. So, and then from what I can see, that's not the right length. There we go. And same thing. We'll just take one of the brown off this time. And then we're going to grab the yellow. And the same thing, we just repeat this process with our different colors.
I'm going to leave one strip of yellow and then do a strip of orange. Or you can do two, because this will be the only time you add orange to the wing. So if you want a little bit more orange stripe in there, you can leave two. I think I gave I gave you three or four for the kit. Um, I'm going to leave two in there just to leave a nice little bit of a bright stripe in there. Then we'll go back to the brown and we're going to leave two pieces of the brown. That's too short. Okay, and you're going to go back to the blue again. I'm going to leave two strips of blue this time. After the blue, again, go back to the red. Two strips of red. There's a small piece of this brown turkey that was sticking out on it. I don't normally pluck them off like that, but it was such a small hair that it wouldn't be noticed. I'm going to do one strip of brown there, and I'm going to do one more strip of yellow. And one more strip of blue, just because I really like that and I think it'll look good. A lot of the color orders, you'll see guys like to mix it up and do married wings in different ways. And so, for the most part, as long as you get the color right and the material right, um, you can kind of stay true to the pattern. Of course, this is not technically true to the pattern because there's quite a few things that have been subbed and are. Um, not going to be present, so we can call it a butcher variant. You can call it a butcher. I'm calling it a butcher. Okay, and that is the that is one side of the married wing for our butcher. 
And then if you want to check it, which I like to do just to make sure, is you take your hook and set it how it's going to be in the vise. And then you can take your wing and set it by the hook and you'll know if it's going to fit. And that's going to fit, and it's going to just fit. Okay. I will not bore you with the uh, opposite side. I'll go ahead and do that off camera, and then uh, I'll see you guys over at the vise. See you shortly. Okay, here we are back over at the vise. Now, we're going to take the, um, the hook out of the package and the silk gut um, imitation, the uh, silk gut substitute. Now, before we put the hook in the vise, make sure that you find a piece of plastic. Um, the first few kits that went out may not have had a piece of plastic in them. Uh, I'm going to cut some up right now and put it in the other kit. So if you get one after this video comes out, uh, the piece of plastic will be in there for you. But for future reference, um, the little plastic containers that you get your, your fly hooks in, um, I cut up little pieces of that, and I use that and wrap it around the edge of the hook right here. And what that does is protects the finish, the japanning on the hook, from the uh, the vise. So we put that in there, and then we'll get that nice and snug. And once you get that snug in there, um, that, that hook shouldn't move around. But you don't want to go so tight that you wind up punching through the plastic and damaging the finish anyway. You don't have to go that tight. Just snug enough that the hook doesn't move in the vise. That'll be sufficient. Now the silk gut substitute is, this is made from monofilament. Um, it's much better than using real silk gut. Uh, silk gut is, well, I'm not going to say it's better, but in a learning situation it most definitely is better. Uh, real silk gut can be kind of hard to find. It can be a little on the expensive side. Um, using, you know, monofilament um, made silk gut substitute. Uh, that'll help you learn the techniques needed without actually going through that cost and that use of, um, you know, such a rare, valuable material. So, the thread I'm using is Lagarden 150 denier, the French thread. And we're going to tie on just a couple of wraps to get the thread on there. And we'll take our substitute here and what we'll do is we'll bend it just like this to make a loop just so that makes a nice nice loop at the end wind our thread down down towards the tip a bit you don't want to go all the way to the tip but you want to I'm going to put a nice a little thread base there and that'll help the uh, grip onto this a little bit better so now when you bend this I like to have it so that way they are on the underside of the hook. So they come together on the underside. Now when you bend it, you want to have about that much of the hook exposed. So we'll go ahead and wrap from there and start wrapping backward. do here yeah, we'll go about that we'll go to about where that taper ends you notice that hook is tapered a little that's to compensate a little bit for this gut uh, we're gonna go to about where that taper ends and we're gonna take a razor blade you can use your scissors too I like using a razor blade because I can get a better cut and then we're gonna take this and kind of parallel the shank a little bit of the hook and just kind of make that taper and 
And then we're going to wind that the rest of the way down right to the hook. Okay. Now you'll notice that by doing that, you're leaving... Um, that's kind. Of, there's kind of a rise right there from the hook to that. That's all right. Uh, we're going to work on that a little bit, but this is a uh, mostly dubbed body fly, so that's going to be kind of not important. It's not like it's a, a floss bodied fly or anything. If it was a floss bodied fly, we would have to work on that taper much more, make sure that's much smoother. But in this case, we've got a little bit of a, a reprieve on that. Now, little little fun fact: uh, the hook on this, the hook point right here. Part of that reasoning that that is there is when they originally started tying these flies, they did it by hand. They didn't use vices, or they had hand vices. So what they would do is, without bobbins, that was a catch for the thread. So as you're tying, they would go through, catch the thread through there like that, and then they can leave that there, do other things, parts of the fly, set the hook down, and then when they're ready, pull it back out from under there and continue tying. Just a little fact. Okay, so now we're going to get back towards the back end of the fly, and the first thing we're going to tie in is the tip and tag. So we get the tip and tag bags, and the instructions it just says tag, but it's the tip and the tag. We're going to grab the tip first, which is the two inches of silver oval tinsel. All right, so, and what we're going to do is typically with floss-bodied flies, you'd have to make up this, this taper and kind of make that um, match a little bit more to keep the body nice and uniform. So what I try to do, especially when doing um, dubbed body flies, is to practice certain techniques as though you were still tying a floss-bodied fly. So I'm going to tie in the tinsel all the way up to here and what that does is that helps thicken the body right here and helps create a little bit more of a, a body taper right there. Kind of help blending them together. It's not really necessary. You could tie in almost right back here. But um, it's just good practice and, I've, and, and I, I like to tell people to do that. Um, just so that way when you do get to floss body flies you know what to do and how to do it. Sorry, i got to back you guys up just a little bit. I'm trying to get all the detail shots for you, but unfortunately that means I keep bumping the camera. I only get about a finger's length worth of, worth of, worth of room here. Oh, can't talk. Alright, so I'm going to go back to... just before the hook point or the yeah the, the barb I'm not going to go quite to the barb on this one usually that's as far as I go and then I'm going to come back forward a little now you can do two things if you want to be a little bit on the I don't know yeah I can I, I like to add a little bit of flash to my flies so you can actually put in your tinsel and then do your floss up to the tinsel then wrap your tinsel and leave a little bit of tinsel on the um, tag but it's not standard practice so to stick with standard practice we'll just wrap our tinsel right here I'm going to do three turns make sure they're touching back to back
you know, when you tie this off, because we're going to have floss up here, keep wrapping this forward and keep the tinsel underneath the hook on the bottom side of the shank. And what that's going to do is eliminate any bump over here where you have a tie off point. Okay. And now you can clip that away. Okay, next take the floss that says the tag. Pull that out carefully. It's a smaller section of floss, so the ends may have frayed just a little bit. But that's really easy to, to do and take care of. Alright. So if the ends kind of started to splay out a little bit, because I think those bags have a little bit of static on them, just uh, lick your fingers and just grab the tip here. Now, again, with floss bodied flies, you got to be sure that, especially with um, silk floss, that your hands are somewhat smooth and you don't have any rough spots. But this is such a short piece of floss that that, that really doesn't matter all that much. Um, I'll show you. It, mostly with larger sections of floss when you're doing like a whole body that's when you really want to pay attention either wear silk gloves or um, even nitrile gloves can help but this is just a small section of the fly so we can just um, make sure your hands are clean and just take it slow and be gentle and uh, you should be okay with it And be very cautious of the hook point. And just on your way back forward, make sure that you're Just taking your time with it and make sure that it stays flat. And see what I'm doing here is I'm using my finger to just to catch the line is what that's called. And that's just holding it in place while I reposition it. And I'm just going to wrap this forward, leaving that right on there. Doing an extra wrap of thread over this is just, all it's going to do is just add a little bit of volume to the body. I'm going to take a quick burnisher. And gently rub that floss in the back. Okay, looks good. Now you're going to take a bag that says tail. 
and you want to make sure that when you're tying your tail in that you don't have a drop right here you want to make sure it's nice and flat from the, the black thread across the floss and I'll make sure your tail doesn't get propped up in the upward position so let's pull the pieces out that are in the tail bag You've got your tail, which is a golden pheasant crest. And you can see like this one here, this one's got a little bit of a curve to it. That's okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure out where we want it. And we want it to come past the bend of the hook, but we almost want it to mirror it. So we want it to be just barely past the bend. I think right about there is good. So we'll figure out where our tie-in spot is. It looks about where our thread is going to be is right here. And we're going to pull back some of this. We'll get rid of the fluff. And then closer towards where the tie-in spot is, I like to take a pair of flat nose pliers and flatten this out a little. You flatten that out and you tie it in, it'll look okay. I'm going to do a loose wrap first and then a second loose wrap and then we can kind of rock it back and forth like this, play tug of war so to speak on both ends and kind of get it to nestle into where you want it I'm actually going to snip off a few of these over here. They were kind of starting to stick down a little bit, and by snipping those off, that creates a little something more for the thread to bite into as well. Which will help keep your tail in place. I still think that's a little bit long and a little tall, so I'm going to pull on this a little. And I still think it's too tall, so what we'll do is we'll break the back a little bit. We'll just use our thumb and our pointer. If you watched my video yesterday on these tails, on uh, Golden Pheasant Crest rather, I showed how to do this as well. And as you can see now, that kind of lays it down a little bit more. It also splays out the uh, golden pheasant a little bit. Much better. Okay. And again, you can wrap back up the body on that if you want. I'm going to cut some of this off. I'm not worried about it. Some guys will like to throw a little head cement on there. Um, I don't plan to fish this, and I think that's sufficiently tied in, so 
I don't believe head cement is necessary. Okay, so next we're going to get into the tail veiling. So, as you'll see, there's a pretty decent sized teal feather that I sent with the kit. So what we're going to do is measure up about a half an inch. No, maybe a quarter of an inch. And we're just going to clip that out of the middle. Hang on to that, we'll need that later. Now we're going to use this part. And what we're going to do here is just clip a few of each side, so about that much from each side. Try to keep them together and try to keep them uniform if you possibly can. And you've also got this blue turkey. And we're going to do the same thing. Keep them all together. Left side, left side, right side, right side. We could have used the chatterer feather here. Uh, there are, this was that's one of the differences um, between the two patterns. But Kelson wanted to have Kelson's pattern calls for teal and um, swan, and I kind of like the way it looked a little bit better. So now we'll take the two, and just like we married with the wings, we'll put them together. We'll put the swan on the bottom and the teal on the top. And then we'll just kind of mess with them until they go together. Teal's not known for playing nicely, so it may be a connection, but it'll be a very light marrying. And then do the same thing with the opposite side. You really want to try and keep the barring all together. But as you can see with this one already, the barring has separated. I don't think that that's going to look terrible. Now we only want to do, I failed to mention, two or three pieces of the teal, of that teal colored turkey. So I'm going to do two, and then we're going to put those together with the other one, back to back, just like you would if it were a pair of wings. And if you do that correctly, I'll keep hitting this camera. You should have them up with something similar looking to this. And that's all we need is literally just this little tip. And we're going to put that right over the top of that tail. Just like that. I'm starting to separate a little. Okay. And we're going to do, put that right over that like that. You don't want this uh, tail veiling to go past that bend. You want it to just go beyond that um, little tinsel there on the, on the tag. Hold that with your left hand and do a very gentle wrap over it. Very gentle. And almost let the weight of the bobbin pull down on it. And then just do one more and relax. And you do the same thing, you just, and you'll do the same thing with the wing as well. And now you can kind of play that tug of war like you did with the tail. If you have a little bit of trouble, things aren't playing quite nicely, you can grab your, your needle 
and kind of help work them into place. You should have mostly teal, or mostly teal feather, and then a little bit of that blue turkey. All right, I'm going to take that, and we're going to put a head, drop a head cement right there, and that'll just help save our work and hold that in place. And if you put the head cement on. Try to avoid getting it on that floss. If it leaches into the floss, it could wind up changing the color on it and well. Alright, I'm gonna let that dry and we'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> so next step here. Yep, yeah, that's on there. Okay. We're gonna put a little bit of wax on the thread. And that is just a little bit of stickiness for the ostrich trail. So now you're going to grab the butt, the bag that says butt on it, which is black ostrich trail. And what we'll, we're going to do is we'll take the black ostrich roll and we'll strip it down by the base just a little bit you don't have to strip too much and if you look at the the hurl you'll see that the the fuzz the fuzzy side and then there's a like a side that's got the um, the quill on it you want the quill to be facing forward when you wrap so I like to tie it in just like this so that way the fuzzy side is touching the um, the body of the fly basically as you tie it in and then when you wrap it and you can just turn it and angle it and make sure that that um, fuzzy side is facing back towards the tail And then just wrap forward. And looks like that tail pinched down a little bit. That's okay. Alright. And then we'll tie that off right here. Now you'll notice that I haven't cut away this body yet. Or the rest of this tail, rather. And that's because I'm going to wrap that into the body a little bit. And we're just going to cut away the rest of that. That just ensures that there's no major step right here, which on this fly again is not going to be major, a, a really big issue. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so the next bag grab is um, your ribbon. So I'm going to grab the two sections of tinsel. I always like to tie in the flat tinsel first and then we'll tie in the other one after. So I want the silver tinsel to be out. This is double sided mylar, uh, silver and gold. I get this from, uh, this is Danville's. 
which I think I ordered this one off of eBay, honestly. I'm sorry guys, I gotta back you up a little more. I'm just having too many times I'm smacking the camera here. All right. So we're gonna tie that in on the underside here with the silver side facing the shank. That will, <clears throat> that will uh, ensure that you have, when you go to wrap it, the silver side will be facing out. And then we're gonna take the oval pencil And I'm going to strip away some of this outer sheathing. Just a little bit of it. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. <clears throat> and we're going to tie that in on the near side of that flat tinsel. Reason being is... And you can see that right there. We're going to tie that in so that way it's... That way it's on the back side of that tinsel. When you wrap it, uh, you always want your oval tinsel to be on the trailing side of your flat tinsel. No matter what fly you're tying, you always want it to be that way. Reason being is that your oval tinsel on fishing flies, the way they were designed, is that the oval tinsel protects the hackle that is being wrapped. So, <clears throat> terribly sorry if you can hear this squeaking. That's just my uh, my nose. Um, the uh, oval tinsel protects that hackle, so you always want the oval tinsel on the back side of it where it's going to protect the hackle as it's wrapped. All right, so now that we've got this all tied in, we've got our tinsel tied in, so that way it is right next to the uh, flat tinsel. And we're ready to start going and wrapping our body. So I'm gonna grab bag number one, which is the red claret seals fur, and you're going to wax your thread. The thread I'm using is uh, cobbler's wax. Um, I, I typically get this from feathersmc.com. Um, John McLean's got, uh, it's Bill Bailey's wax, which I absolutely love. <clears throat> I've also heard things about uh, Shane Couch having some really good cobbler's wax. Uh, I have not tried it, but I've heard some good things. So now when you're when you're doing your dubbing, just remember less is more. You don't have to go and wrap really, really super tight on it. Um, you just need... You just need a little bit on there, on the thread. Now, when you're dubbing seals for... Well, dubbing in general, really. You don't want to um, go back and forth like this as you're doing it. It's not going to stay on the... On the thread that way. You want to apply just a little bit of wax and always go in the same direction. So if you start turning clockwise, just stay that way and keep going clockwise. Okay. And then we'll just wrap that on there. <coughs> <coughs> See how it's got a nice bushy look to it. Um, that way, you, that that's good. You don't have to wind up brushing it out later. Um, I like it to be a little on the tighter side, so I'm just gonna tighten that up a little, and maybe even add just a little bit more. It may look like not a lot came with the kit, but you don't need a lot. Remember, there's only four, there's four sections of this. So for each section, you only need a little bit. Now, your hackle, the black hackle is going to start after this first section. So, I'm going to grab your bag of that says hackle. And you're going to pull out the black. <clears throat> now, this is a thinner... 
um, saddle hackle that I chose. And as you can see, you can just pull that right up, pull these very gently like so. And what that does, it splays it all out nicely and you can kind of get an idea of where you want your hackle and where you want to start it. Um, these have a really nice taper to them, so you have kind of a lot of selection. For a starting point, I think I'm going to start somewhere right around here, closer to the tip. That way, when you wrap up to the front, you'll probably right, be right up into here somewhere. And that's about how long your, your body hackle will be by the time you get to the front. Which is about what you want. You don't want it to be much longer than that. So to prepare the tip, let's grab our scissors, cut a few of these little fibers off here, and then we'll just clip the tip. And I'm going to tie this in. If you're looking at the feather, there is a clear curve to it. So that the curve upward, that would be the inside of the feather. And that curve downward is the outside of the feather. You want to have the inside of the feather facing you when you tie it in. And I also tie it in on the very top. The body segments are almost in tune with... By the way, I, I wanted to um, touch on this a little bit. The body segments are almost in tune with your tinsel wraps. So... That'll be one tinsel wrap. I could probably throw a little bit more on there. But... Two... Back that up just a hair. You should have a total of about five tinsel wraps on this fly. Okay, so when you're tying in your your hackle, you want your hackle to start on the second turn after the first color. So that would be right about here. So you line that up with where you tie in your where your hackle. So I'm actually going to add just a little bit more dubbing. Uh, we only need a, a just a tiny bit more, but that's a great way to judge how much dubbing to put on and where to tie in your hackle at. Okay, I think that's about perfect. Hackle on top, inside of the hackle of the feather facing you. Okay, any excess hair that you've got, any excess uh, seals fur, you can put that back in the bag and hang on to that. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Go on to body segment two, bag two. This will be the pale blue seals fur. And just repeat the process. Since you don't need to tie in uh, another section of hackle, you can just judge how much to use based on that claret section. So again, we'll put on a little bit of wax
And then body segment three, your claret cereals fur, which is a little on the darker side. Again, we'll do a little bit of dubbing or a little bit of uh, wax. The seals fur, by the way, I also get from Feathers MC. Uh, John McLean has a great selection of colors. Not just of seals fur, but mohair as well. So you're looking for some really good dubbing options. Uh, and the seals fur isn't too terribly bad. You get, um, I believe it's a gram of seals fur for like $4. And uh, that gram goes a long way. That's, there's, there's quite a bit there. Okay, and then segment four which is blue. For me, this is probably going to be a shorter one. Um, it just looks like I'm running out of room just a little bit. <clears throat> This, this is a light blue seals fur. And I actually think the pattern called for a dark blue. Okay. Now we're going to take our tinsel. Start with the flat tinsel first, and we'll run that up, and we'll one turn, and then the second crosses right, that second turn crosses right in front of this black hackle. your oval tinsel to ride right along this flat the back edge of that black of that flat silver and as you can see that'll that should lay right down almost on top of that black hackle I like using the rotary function here because then I know what my, my hackle wrap or my uh, tensile wrap <clears throat> is landing where I want it. And then I'm going to back wrap off of the flat tensile so that way I can get the oval and the flat tensile tied in together. Now I'm going to shorten these just to kind of get them out of the way, but I'm not going to completely shorten them yet. Oh boy. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, folks, don't, don't do what I just did. Don't use your good scissors on metal tinsel. 
um, have a, a junk pair of scissors or something you get from the dollar store cheap use those to uh, cut the metal tinsel that can mess up your scissors I don't typically do that I just was not paying attention I guess okay so now you're gonna take your black hackle and in this case I'm gonna we're gonna basically fold it and double it as I wrap and you're gonna basically what you want to do is tuck that center stem just tuck that in underneath and behind that oval tinsel and you'll see as you do that it literally just about folds that hackle for you giving it a nice backward <coughs> nice backward to outward splay And just do that until you get to the front. When you get up to the front, try to hold the hackle and back off of this tinsel a couple of wraps. Get close to almost unwrapping just to avoid thread buildup because thread buildup will be a killer when it comes time to make your head <clears throat> okay so now that you're up here you're going to take your hackle and just palmer it back and do one or two turns of the black just enough to leave a little bit more black up front. And then we'll just tie that off. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to trim this tinsel as well. I'm all set with that, I think. I actually think I'm too far close to the head. I've been doing that lately, crowding the head. I don't know why. <coughs> well now if you take everything and you start pulling it back a little bit like this, you can wrap backwards. And that'll kind of help save you a little bit. And now if you've got a little brush, or you've got um, something that you can get in here with, and you can pull out some of this seal's fur. And that's going to kind of give you that little bushier of a look. I'm having a little hard time with this one. This comb's not working very good for me. I don't have a metal wire brush. But you can also use your dubbing needle. You can go in and just kind of pick it out a little bit. I'm not going to go much further. I kind of like the way it looks now. Up by the head here is looking a little less attractive, but uh, we'll get to that. Alright, so now we're back there. We're going to go and grab our yellow hackle out of the bag. This, quite literally, we only need one or two turns. Um, we don't need much. It's just enough to add a little bit of color. So again, we're going to take this hackle feather, which is a schlappen hackle feather, and we're going to spread that out and figure out what length we want it. And the length I think we would like would look good is a little bit longer than the black here. So I think we're right about there. We'll go up here into the tip and we're gonna pull away some of this 
on both sides. And just strip that a little, a little bit away. And if it doesn't strip away, um, you can always use your scissors and just cut it. And that'll work just as good. <clears throat> so we will tie that in. I'll leave that butt end in there. We'll fold the hackle a bit as we wrap it back. One thing you can do is fold it back like that. Doubling it back will help prevent it from pulling out like that. There we go. Now it's not going nowhere. And we'll just do one. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that at one wrap. We'll tie that off briefly. Clip it up here. Okay. And then we'll take that yellow and kind of pull that more down towards the throat. <clears throat> towards the bottom part of the fly. And then we'll take the galena, which is the last the guinea hackle feather. And then we'll do the same thing with that. This one will strip all this fuzziness away. And then the tip We'll figure out about where we'll tie in. And with this one, I don't want to strip the tip. The, up towards the front here, it can be a little bit um, delicate. So for this one, we'll just trim these a little bit like this. And then we'll tie that in. Now you can you can do it two ways. You can double it like this and fold it. Or if you want, you can strip one side of the feather and only use one side. Let's see how this looks. I'm just pull away a couple of these stragglers up top that don't want to really fold down. And if they don't comply, you can always just use a pair of tweezers. And if you're trying to pull these off of here, pull away from you. Whenever you if you pull away from you, they'll pop right off. Be gentle with ones that are towards the tip of where your feather is, of where you tied in. Tips of the feathers are always a bit more delicate and run the risk of breaking the feather. Now if you want to, you can do what I'm doing here and wrap the thread around that 
around that hackle. That'll help kind of fold it down a little bit. Just remember to unwrap it. You don't want to leave it that way. Okay. And that completes the lower half of the fly. And if you've gotten this far, this is about what it should look like. And in the next section, we will concentrate on the second half of the fly, on the top half. So, hope you like, hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully you found it uh, helpful and instructional. And uh, if you've got the kit, hopefully you've gotten this far with uh, minimal issues. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, think about subscribing. I'm going to have new stuff coming out all the time. Now, like I said, with these kits, I've only got a few left that are available. Um, when they're gone, they're gone. But at the end of every month, or one once a month, I'm going to give one away. I'll make up another kit. Uh, each month will be different, so you never know what type I'm going to give away. But uh, I will give away one to each to a subscriber, and that subscriber will also get one-on-one uh, -on -one tying instruction with me uh, to work on that. So, uh, you know, a little something to look forward to. Um, if you've got uh, friends and family that are interested in fly tying, they're interested in this kind of thing, send them over the channel. Have them take a look. Uh, you know, any kind of shares, um, liking, comments, interaction with my channel, that helps the channel grow, helps me know that I'm doing the right thing, lets, lets uh, YouTube know that I'm doing something good as well, and uh, it helps me create more content for you guys. I'll know what you guys want, and I can create better stuff for you. So uh, with that being said, I'll catch you guys in video number two. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and if, you, if video two doesn't come out before Thanksgiving, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving for those in the uh, North America area that, that celebrate it. So uh, I hope you're all safe, happy, healthy. Take care for now. I'll see you in the next video.